What's your greatest memories of that? Just that old San Gabriel Valley Pasadena. It was. It was, yeah. it was a crazy party in time. It was a little easier than it is now. You know, I think the club scene was a lot more fun than it is now. Yeah. I think, I, I, like they said in the movie, I don't think we used to go out scene. and they'd hang out all night. Check right. out yeah. new bands. And, uh, but I, I was just saying earlier, I, I can't believe that we went through all that to get to where we are now. That, that was a lot to go through. It really was. But you know, like I, like I said earlier, sometimes when you're trying to make it in this business, it's more fun than after you make it because after you make it, it becomes too cool and red and you know, with all the realities of, of it all. Yeah. But uh, before you make it, it's when you're having fun, and sleeping on a couch, drinking, you know, banging all kinds of girls and just having fun, <laughs> living the high life. I told I told him I remember meeting with your manager in a little bungalow behind the athletic Stuart White. club. Stuart there you White. go. I still the Berwyn Complex, yeah. Van Halen, Ber yeah. up in the. He used to have office there. He did exactly in Berwyn the back. Yeah, Turn me on the snow. Too, yeah, there. incredible days. I also remember when Randy joined Ozzy, uh -huh. and I went to the Music Plus. Remember the little right. licorice piece of Music Plus there, at Sunset and Vine. And I remember you. I ran to you in the front and you were reading Kerrang and like Randy was taking off. Oh, you were yeah. just like, oh my God, man, this you was know, the guy from the neighborhood. Right. You know, Randy indirectly got me the gig in Quiet Ride, actually. He he told Kevin, yeah, you gotta check out this guy, Carlos Cavazzo. A lot of my students are talking about him. You know, they, they didn't watch him in the, in the club scene and say he's you know, good or whatever. And uh, because of that, you know, Kevin checked me out and they liked me and I ended up getting the gig. So thank you, Randy, wherever you are. Well, t well tell us about Randy. We know, I mean, the music lives on, but right. the person behind it, t tell us about what you knew about him. I met him quite a number of times, actually, and he was always just a, seemed like a nice guy, pleasant guy. No, like uh, Kelly Garney said in the in the film, he didn't have a competition in in his body. He didn't he didn't, yeah. he didn't seem very competitive. He just seemed like a normal guy, you know. It's and, all about uh, the music. He didn't yeah. care. Uh, I remember I almost got a chance to jam with him on stage. I went to a party in Burbank and uh, Snow, they had some uh, gear on, on a stage at this party and so Snow was going up there jamming with people and uh, in came Kevin and, and Rudy, you know, I'm sorry, Randy, Kevin and Randy. And we were trying to get them, come on up and jam with us. They, 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 I think they were a little too drunk to play or something. I don't know what happened, but they didn't, ended up not jamming, but I wish they would have. Really well, tell us about those old days of Starwood, you know. We still got the whiskey, yeah. but, you know, the Starwood, tell us how special that club was. It was a unique club. Um, I think the people there were really nice. They knew how to treat, you know, people, uh, upcoming bands, and uh, they gave us a lot of chances. And... Uh, just like uh, it's just a unique club. There's so many different rooms to go into. Uh, the disco room. You had the restaurant in there, and you had a, a little room to get some peace and quiet. You had sure. the stage, the VIP, and then you had the upstairs. Yeah, it felt like a real show, a real yeah. rock concert there. Yeah, it was a really nice setup. It really was. Yeah. Now it's a little strip mall. I mean, yeah. driving down Hollywood, it must it must pull at your heartstrings where Tower Records used yeah. to be, and of course where you know all those record labels were. I feel I feel really lucky now, I was, to be part of that. Now is now. Now, Posh has all got it out, right? Where you guys right. recorded? Record those uh, first couple of quiet That's all records. gone. I believe so, yeah. Wow. Well, tell us about Progress. that. I mean, right across some Paramount movie lot, uh, the, the Astro we, Burger. We to, I yeah, mean, I used to eat that Astro Burger you know, every night when we recorded. Bang your head right there, yeah, huh? Right, yeah. We did all the records there, and it was uh, quite a time for us, you know, it really was. A yeah. Successful time. She had no idea that the little music you're making in this little corner studio was going to put you at the floor. Forum and MTV I every not, hour. I did not. I remember when we first came up with uh, Bang Your Head, it was actually a snow song. It was called No More Booze. Yeah. I took the music and changed the music around, and Kevin read the lyrics. And he, and he told me, Yeah, I'm going to name it Bang Your Head. I go, What? Bang Your Head? That's kind of a stupid name. Are you sure? You know, it goes to show what I knew. And he said, he, he learned that actually from Randy, because Randy had called him on the phone long distance. All these kids over here banging their head. He goes, What's that? Uh, they're called headbangers or something. So, Kevin, I'm going to write a song about that. And he did, and it was yeah. good, I guess. That's amazing. Now, of that era, what was your greatest memory? I mean, looking back with all the hoopla, what, what rings true? Uh, I don't know. Um, probably our time at the Starwood. That was probably the, our, our, some of our best shows and uh, the most prestigious club. So it wasn't the always the big places. It was Not with the snow. feeling the crowd. With Quiet Ride you're talking about or with snow? Well, with, uh, with both. With, but with obviously Quiet Ride, I have to say our, our, one of our biggest moments was Dust Festival. That was oh definitely God. one of the biggest shows we ever did. I forgot about that. Yeah. What a day. Yeah. What a day. Right in the front. Oh it my God. Dust Festival. That, that was a pretty, I got to you, you guys had to open the we show, did, right? You know, uh, I think some 
Jeremy had dropped Molly off crew? at the last minute. We no, but I mean, you guys were the first one on the Yeah, stage? we were. We were before Molly. Wow. Somebody had dropped out, and our manager got us on the bill, and uh, it, was, it was really nice. I got, what was I got your to, feeling to walk out, and you couldn't even see the end of the people? It was crazy. It was like uh, the front row was just like a, a bunch of wood and a structure, yeah. and then you'd see all the people, and they were hosing them down, I remember, and uh, Super just hot. a sea of people. It was like, amazing. You know, they were like probably from here, here to halfway across the street to, yeah. to where the stage was. But, but I mean, you had Van Halen, you had Scorpion. Yeah, and I got to meet Judas a lot of those Priest. people. I, I hadn't met a lot of those people until that day, and uh, everybody was very nice talking backstage and meeting. And yeah. It was cool. And there's still a venue out there. There's still yeah. the San Manuel Glen Amphitheater Glen Glen on those yeah. lands, right, man. Right. Can't drive to Vegas without glancing over where the Us sure. Festival used to be. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think about the same thing when I go up there, too. Yeah. 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 yeah it, everything you've seen, everything you've done, advice right. you give to the young player, the young band. Somebody's got a dream in their head just like you did. What do you get? What advice do you get? Uh, you got to stick to it and don't give up and write your own music because uh, that's the key is becoming a good songwriter. The, the, sooner, the sooner you become a songwriter or, or the sooner you start writing songs, the better you're, you're going to become as you get older. And uh, just write stuff that you hear in your head, um, uh, things you lived in your life. Uh, moments that you've had, uh, feelings that you've had, you know, maybe sad feelings, a slow song, happy feelings, a fast song, you know, whatever you feel in your mind. You know. yeah. and, and those emotions you tap into, that song can live forever. It's amazing right. to hear right. songs from that era. The deeper the that emotions. still sound as good as the day you heard yeah. them. The deeper the emotions, the better the song maybe, and people can relate to that song and it can last forever. Right?